Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. John chapter 1, starting at verse 1 to 14. Now, Pat Love's Two Cents to, to preface this. A lot of times, many of us wonder who Jesus really is. We hear the Messiah, we hear Son of God, we hear Prophet, or he wasn't at all. But I want you to hear how John describes him, and then I will follow with Pat's two cents. Because sometimes we don't really know what the word is truly saying. This is the word, and I'm going to read it to you. Jesus is oftentimes referred in the Bible He's referred to as the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. Pat's two cents. Those are the Jews, all right. Verse 12, but as many as received him, like you and me, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Let me pause there. This is Pat's two cents. Become as a progressive. That means we are a work in progress. We are ongoing. We go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from immaturity to maturity. Okay. That's enough for that. <laughs> Let me re repeat that. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, even does not mean, uh, oh, and by the way, also them that believe. No, even is actually like equivalent to. So it's almost like saying, in other words, to them that believe on his name. Sometimes we hear these words, we're not quite sure we, we apply them the way we think in today's language. Okay, listen. 13. Okay, 12. Even to them that believe on his name. 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, check it out, check it out. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Hmm. That tells it right there. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Excuse me. Pat's two cents. So for those who don't really know who Jesus is, that says it right there. He is the living word. He is God's heart made into a man so that God can be seen and understood by us through Christ Jesus. Have you ever 
uh, had a, a company or a group and you needed to train them because they need to train a bunch of other people. But they need to train according to your stipulations. They need to communicate according to your guidelines. You get me? When they speak, they're representing you. But to them, they're you because you've given them the authority. Well, it's even more so with Jesus. He is the word made flesh. He was with God in the beginning. The John says he is God. So we don't have to wonder about his deity. The safest thing we can do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. Now, when he says, no man cometh to the Father but by me, that means he is the door. He is the only entrance way to get through to the Father. Back in the day when I was a little kid, we used to have uh, switchboard operators, maybe right before I was born. We had switch, they had switchboard operators. And if you made a call, let's say I want to call you. Hey, Charlie, how you doing? No, you can't do that. Uh, yes, operator. Yes, could you please dial blah, 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 blah. Okay, thank you. And they'll say, just a moment, please. <coughs> Pull out. <coughs> and now you're connected. Well, that's who Jesus is. He is our connection to God. I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture so it's really clear. Because you'd be surprised how many of us don't really understand. Now, here's another thing we have to know. When God said back in the Old Testament to Abraham, when, I mean Moses, when Moses said, who should I say sent me? You know, when I go to Pharaoh to tell him that you said to let my people go, well, you know, what authority? Who do I say sent me? You know, what's your name? And God said, I am that I am. Now, this is who Jesus is. Remember, Jesus is God. He is the son of God. He is the only door, the only connection to God. He is God's word, God's heart, God's human representation, God's uh, human, mani the manifestation of God in the flesh. I'm really trying to make you understand. So when you need a doctor, God is the great physician. Jesus heals. When you need a psychologist, Jesus heals. When you need a, defend, a, a defense attorney, Jesus heals. Now, what I'm talking about is in life, somebody accuses you of something. You ask God to vindicate you. You don't try to vindicate yourself. God is everything. So we go to, to God. We pray to God. In the name, here's the door and the key, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, they're come. I'm giving you an example. Lord, they're coming against me. Lord, please protect me. You're talking to God. Please protect me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. See, in the name of Jesus is your password. You want to get into this nightclub? What's the password? It's exclusive. Only members can come in. And if you're not a member, you don't know the password. So when you pray to God and you have requests and, and you have desperate cries and you're in a crisis and you need him to intervene like right now, you say it in the name of Jesus. But in order to swipe that card, you must be in Jesus. Now God's mercy will answer you many times. Even if you're not. That's his mercy. 
but that's his choice. But those of you who are not in Christ are not guaranteed an answered prayer. Get in Christ. It is better to have the creator on your side than for you to be on his bad side. Don't you think? We're going to come back for more. I'm just trying to help you understand what, what role Jesus plays in our lives. Because we think when he went to the cross, yes, he went to the cross. He died at the hands of the creation he made. But he succumbed to that. He died. He nailed, that means our sins. He, he died in your place and he died in my place. All mankind. That was his gift to us. Salvation. Which means you, when you accept Jesus into your heart, it's just as if you never sinned. Because he took all your sins and nailed them to the cross. But then he, would, he rose from the dead three days later. And while in between the death and three days later, he went to hell and he took the keys. Now, he has all authority in every level of existence. De the devil has to bow to him. Demons have to obey him. There is no authority higher as far as entities go. No authority higher. All authority has been given to Jesus. So if you are dealing with sleep paralysis, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get off me and get out of here. In the name of Jesus. Demons have to obey. They're not obeying you. They're obeying that authority of that name. You have to, when you understand who Jesus is, Jesus is not, uh, he doesn't stop at being our Savior. He doesn't stop at stopping us from going to hell. Even though his work on the cross is finished, what his name does continues to work in our lives. I'm going to stop here because I can go on. This thing can get so deep. But this is just a, um, a, a, a touching the surface to help many of you understand who really don't know who Jesus is for us. He will deliver you and me from you and me. Sometimes our worst enemy. Yeah, you and I can be our worst enemy. Go to him. Ask him to forgive you. Go to God. Ask him to forgive you for sins. Ask him to tell him you want to accept his son Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And pray it in the name of Jesus. And ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Because that's what Jesus left us when he left. He left us the greatest power to become the sons of God. And the power we need is that of an anointed divine new nature. It has to come in. It's not part of us naturally. Then it's easier to live a holy life. It's more natural. And there's a whole lot that comes with that. But do the, the first work. Give your heart to the Lord. God bless you.